Hello, everyone. The topic I'm presenting today is an examination of relationship between career maturity and multiple factors by future selection. And I'm Shu Xinjiang from Shenzhen College of International Education in China. And this research is done by me and my supervisor, Qianlong Xu. And this is the outline of my presentation today. I'll first talk about the research background and the concept of career maturity, and also some past research on career maturity and other factors affecting it as well. And um, I'll introduce the objective of this research, and as well as the method, the approach we used uh, to carry out this research and reach the result, and talk about the results result and possible interpretations for the result, and then conclude the whole research and talk about the possible improvements and limitations of the research. I'll first talk about the background of research. Uh, since the 20th century, career development has been a very crucial component of education. And there is research suggesting that career preparation should be carried out early at school. So that early career preparation allows students to develop the knowledge and skills needed for making appropriate choices, managing transition in learning and moving to workplace. And um, so that an early career development is very significant for all students and especially for high school students who will face the Hello everyone, maybe a connectivity issue. He'll be back very soon. Thank you. Oh, sorry, did I just like lost my connection? It's okay, no worries. Okay. Uh... So I, I will, when, uh, like, which page did I like stopped on when I lost my connection? I'm not very sure. I think this one, you can start from this one, please. Okay, thanks. Um, the concept of vocational maturity was first introduced by Super in 1955, and then is slowly replaced by the phrase career maturity, which is generally the same thing. And this phrase is defined as the level of progress on career development tasks of an individual. And the concept of career maturity emphasizes that career is a continuous and dynamic process and it can represent the degree of preparation an individual um, has to face the tasks in um, career and career development. In this case, career maturity can be a standard to measure how well a student has idea about his or her future career direction because although according to Super's um, theory, career maturity is separated into different stages in an individual's life, uh, according to their late ages. But uh, for the teenagers and young people, the trend of career maturity is generally in an increasing trend. So um, students who have high school students who have higher career maturity, we can consider this as they have a, a good idea about their career direction. And here are some previous studies on the relationships between uh, some potential factors that may affect career maturity. For example, on Park's research uh, on proactive personality, career indecision, and career maturity, and Emerson's research of 
decision-making self-efficacy and career maturity. And the similarity between previous studies is that um, there are, there are um, researchers investigating the relationship between uh, career maturity and one, two or three big factors. And each of these big factors are uh, uh, obtained from one or more questionnaires. So uh, the res our research is thinking about that if we extract the smaller questions from the, quest from the large questionnaires and consider each of the questions as a factor, which is like more close to our daily life, how would that um, be more, uh, have, a, have a significance on the other side, like to suggest a possible adjustment for uh, curriculums that can help students enhance their career maturity. So this is basically our objective to investigate the relationship between career maturity and a branch, a larger scale of factors among senior school students. And uh, here is an approach that we used to carry out this research. And the whole methods can be generally separated into three sections. The first section is uh, the design of the survey, like designing the questionnaire. And the second section is doing the data collection and elimination of invalid questionnaires. We send the questionnaires to um, hundreds of students and finally obtain uh, a total of 189 valid questionnaires to use as our data for the research. And the final section is a statistical analysis, which contains normalization and grouping of the data because there are um, different types of questions. And finally, we use mathematical modeling to um, fit the data and compare uh, the efficiency of the different models and choose the best one. Uh, let's first look at the survey. The survey is, the questionnaire is divided into three parts. The first part is a career maturity questionnaire developed by uh, Lin Hui Liu and Jia Jia Liu in their research paper on career maturity. And uh, this questionnaire is used in their research as well as a bunch of other research on career maturity as well. So we consider this questionnaire as a valid questionnaire. And um, this part of the survey is extracted from this questionnaire and have a total of 30 questions. After the participant of the, of the question of the survey, um, finish this part of questions, they obtain a total mark for their career maturity. And the full mark is 120. And part two is um, a bunch of questions which we consider to be potential factors of career maturity. And each question uh, is considered as a single factor, although we deal with them differently because there are different types of questions. And part three is um, four questions, which we put into the questionnaire as validation track questions. The instructions of the instructions of the question is like uh, instructing the participant to directly choose one of the five choices in the question, and um, if the participant uh, choose the wrong one, like not following the instruction, we consider the questionnaire as an invalid one because. Uh, it appears that the participant is not really looking at the questions seriously. And although the questions are separated into three parts, in the questionnaires they are mixed together, so the participant cannot uh, identify uh, which question is from which part. So uh, this is a um, insurance on uh, randomness. And there are uh, several types of questions. The first type of questions have their options um, from in a in an order of uh, levels. For example, um, the question on the left have an order of frequency uh, decreasing, and the question on the right have have the frequency increasing. 
So we can assign each of the options of value and this value can be increasing or decreasing. So, uh, so we group this kind of, this type of question together and um, we need to normalize uh, the value of this type of questions so that their upper values are the same. And uh, the second type of questions is this kind of binary questions that uh, there are only two choices or there are only two or four choices. So um, this kind of type of binary variables are considered as binary uh, dummy variables in the model. Uh, so it's different from the first type of question. And there are also this type of question which allow the participant to choose more than one option. And to deal with this type of question, we group the, we group the options in the questions into um, smaller groups, like smaller number of groups. For example, we group family communication and social communication into one group. And this group is called um, face-to-face -face communication, like communication between people. And uh, using computer and mobile phones are grouped together because uh, it can be considered as access to the internet. So when, uh, when any options in a group is chosen, then we assign a binary value, value of one to this group, like this group is chosen. Or otherwise, if none of the options in the group is chosen, then um, a binary variable of zero is assigned to the group. So that uh, for this question, there are um, about four variables obtained from one question. And um, after dealing with the data uh, with normalization and grouping, we use statistical models to carry out feature selection. Uh, the two models we use are forward stepwise regression and Lasso. Uh, forward stepwise regression um, is a statistical model which carry out linear regression and prevent overfitting at the same time by greedily adding variables to the model until no improvements can be made by adding more variables. So that uh, when the models when uh, the loop stops, uh, the variables that are not adding, added into the model are eliminated. So this is how it carries out feature selection. And for Lasso, uh, which is also called L1 norm penalized regression method, uh, it carries out both variable selection and regu regularization in order to improve the accuracy of the model. Um, after, uh, after building Lasso, uh, when the when the coefficients of the factors are assigned to zero, then it means that uh, they are eliminated from the final model, and this is how Lasso carry out feature selection. So um, we compare the root mean square error of cross validation of simple linear regression and four stepwise regression and Lasso. And we find that uh, the error of Lasso is the least. And so we apply Lasso to fit the whole data. And table one, which, is, which will be showed in the next page of the PowerPoint, um, will show the result of Lasso. Uh, in this table, all the factors are shown except for the predictors that are eliminated by feature selection. And we consider the factors with p-value less than 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 as significant factors. And um, for the result, we obtain um, 12 significant factors and there are uh, different interpretations for the factors. So oh, let me show you the factors. The first factor is the educational level of factors. According to the result, um, the higher the educational level of the student's fathers, the higher the career maturity will be. 
And possible explanation for this phenomenon is that um, if the father of students uh, did not accept a higher level of education, for example, undergraduate or graduate level of education, they are unlikely to provide a comprehensive information of all careers, especially for the more um, elite jobs or um, STEM jobs. So it's kind of reasonable that the career maturity of a student uh, with a father without a higher educational level is relatively low because um, he or she don't have the access to a more comprehensive range of information. And the second fa factor is the frequency of mother's companion for a student. And similar to factor one, uh, the higher the frequency that the mother is com company the students, the higher their career maturity will be. So a possible explanation is that uh, the more frequently a student stay with his or her mother, the more potentially he or she can acquire enough experienced guidance of career from um, his or her mother. It's also a kind of um, access to information. The amount of time, the amount of talk they will have with their parents and uh, the po possibility that they will acquire uh, more career information is higher. The third factor is uh, the active academic performance at school. Uh, the result shows that uh, the students who achieve higher grade point average GPA are investigated to have higher career maturity. Um, in most cases, GPA is related with the ability to learn so that the students with better learning ability is believed to have higher career maturity. And it can be explained by that when uh, it's easier for students to learn, it's more likely for them to develop interest in uh, some subject that they, they are learning and uh, therefore develop further interest into this field and possible future careers. And the fourth factor is the level of involvement in social activities, for example, extracurricular clubs, student union and religious groups, etc. And according to the result, the level of involvement of social activities is not positively related with career maturity. A possible explanation for this phenomenon can be that uh, social activities is not necessarily helpful for gaining career maturity. And although they, they are helpful in building leadership and uh, developing group cooperation skills, but um, these might not be significantly related to career maturity. And the fifth factor is the level of agreement with the statement that uh, the GPA of a student are highly correlated to the effort of the student put into study. And this factor is significant to predict career maturity according to the result, but whether they are positively or negatively related is not confirmed because the evidence interval of the coefficient can be either positive or negative. And this might be explained by the fact that students can misunderstand their efforts since it's too objective, subjective. The sixth factor is the level of agreement of the statement that tough experience in life and studying allow participants to gain, knowledge, to gain courage when facing difficulties. Um, the result shows that students who strongly agree with the statement have more courage when facing difficulties and hardships, and they tend to have higher career maturity. Uh, students who strongly agree with the statement uh, can be more likely to gain experiences after going through some difficulties in the past. And this characteristics of self-learning and self-reflection can help gain career maturity. And the seventh factor is the level of agreement of the statement that um, I will insist my opinion even if others are opposed to it. Uh, 
according to the results, the level of agreement with the statement is having positive relationship with career maturity. Students who strongly agreed with the statement usually insist on their decisions and opinions of future career. And it appears reasonable that those who easily change their opinion after other people's persuasion can appear fluid. And um, people with fluid opinions is more difficult to have a firm decision on career. And factor eight to 11 are from the same question. So uh, we group them together and they are all frequently used channels for obtaining information. And these four factors are binary variables. And the result of the four factors shows that um, if students frequently search for information via publications, like published books, newspapers and magazines, portal sites or a search engine, they tend to own higher career maturity. However, if students always gain knowledge through person-to-person -person communication, their career maturity seems to be lower than students who use uh, more objective portals of, of uh, accessing information. Uh, a possible explanation is that objective channels are more reliable than subjective channels for students to acquire information. The last factor is, is uh, also a binary variable, uh, whether news is an important way to acquire information. Uh, the result demonstrates that students tend to have a lower career maturity when they have a strong need for daily, daily news, including politics, economics, sports, and entertainment. A possible explanation is that some fields of news is, uh, are irrelevant to foster career maturity. Uh, to conclude the research, uh, we use a reasonable method to evaluate the relationship of career maturity with potential factors. And the results show that Lasso is a reliable model to select uh, essential, the most essential factors. Uh, we also found that uh, several factors that we studied, we found important is kind of considered small. So they are not studied in previous research. And, but according to our research, they can be important to predict career maturity. Of course, there are uh, limitations of our research. For example, the model only considered linear relationship and the design of questionnaire might have deficiency because we uh, include a limited amount of factors of different perspectives. And uh, the sample size uh, is kind of small and it's limited to two regions in China. So it is hard to represent um, all the high school students in China. And here are the references that I used in my presentation. And that's all of my presentation. Thank you for listening.